Yeah, boy, yeah, boy, yeah, boy. Welcome to Watch Me Build It. Welcome to my first one beautiful watch a month project. So one of the big questions when you get into watches is which dive watch is your favorite? And many people land on the answer that Rolex is their favorite. I've spent a lot of time looking at so many different designs and there is a watch that has really stood out to my imagination. It's very similar to a Rolex, but it isn't a Rolex. The Rolex that stands out to me, of course, is the Rolex Mill Sub. And this watch is the Omega Seamaster 165024. It was a Mill Sub before Rolex was a Mill Sub. And today I'm gonna to be building an homage to that watch. The links below to some really good videos and articles on the 165024. And I'd recommend if you want to know more about the watch, go watch those and read those because there are other people who do a much better job than I do. But what I've done in this video is I've used parts, all of them from Namoki, with the exception of the straps, and I've built an homage to that watch. Strap-wise, I shouted out to Adrian of Bark and Jack and uh, we connected over the internet. I bought a couple of his straps and um, I've put the watch on two of his straps um, just because that's typically how you find these watches. They usually are on straps and not on bracelets. Namoki have told me that all of the SKX bracelets will fit this case. So if you want a bit of a steel bracelet on yours, you can do that. Hang around with me till the end of this video and I will tell you how you can get a discount on the parts for your build. But more than anything, let's just enjoy the build.
So let's do a quick outside in walkthrough on this watch. As usual, we begin with the case back. Here we're looking at the Namoki Slimline display case back with a sapphire insert. It really is a beautiful case back. Because of the sapphire insert and its slimline proportions, it only has a 100 meter water resistance. So you can still swim with this watch, but I wouldn't recommend snorkeling or diving if you've got this case back on. Personally, I think it's super worthwhile. But I love the way that it shows the movement off. Some folk don't like the NH35s. I figure if it's mechanical, it's worth flaunting. I, um, I put the Rossbau Insignia on here, and I just really like the way that this case back looks. Transitioning to the case itself, this case really is amazing. I'm going to take a while just to luxuriate over these curved Omega type lugs. Aren't they incredible? They're polished beautifully well, just things of beauty. But have a look at the finishing behind the place where the strap is going to seat. It's a high polished finish in a place that usually nobody will ever take a look. It comes with a fat Seiko spring bars and here's some good news guys. This case takes all SKX straps. If you have a look on the inside of the lug, on the flat face, that's about the only place I can see rough finishing on this entire watch and it's difficult even to capture it on camera there's some like vertical it, it just isn't finished to the same high polish um, as we circle around to the side of the case we're going to see the only place that i saw any sort of inconsistency in the finish and it's on the side what i found is that on the convex surface the grain of the brushing is short but in the concave lug sides, the grain is longer. It's a bit difficult to catch on camera. And in the end, it's almost inconsequential. And something you'd only really pick up if you were looking at it um, this closely. Dimension-wise, what needs to be considered is that this is an SKX case that's made to homage and Omega. That means it's 42 mils wide with short lugs. And so while it's wider than a subcase, it actually sits well on the wrist. However, because it's based on an SKX, it has a chapter ring. And this pushes the dial deeper into the build. You add that to the NH35 movement and it's a little bit tubby. Not tremendously tubby, but it's something that you do need to consider. A tremendous element about this case is the fact that there is no helium escape valve so if you've always wanted to build a an omega looking watch that doesn't have the escape valve here's your opportunity i'm a huge fan of this coin edge bezel and it just works so well in bringing a retro aesthetic to this case something to consider though is that it has a perpendicular edge and that adds to the feeling of the thickness of this entire build you could get a Submariner style bezel or Namoki have made a bezel that looks like those that go on the Seamaster 300 Professionals. Either of those would move away from this problem and give you something that is a bit more elegant. The click on the bezel is interesting. I'm going to drop in a little bit of audio over here so you can hear what it sounds like. It's not a great crisp defined click there's a bit of back play on the bezel as well not a tremendous amount so it's, it's not the best bezel action but it's not the worst it's probably kind of like a five or six out of ten namoki do supply two gaskets a 0 0.8 mil which is fitted and a 0 0.7 which is separate if you fit the 0 0.7 you'll get a more fluid action and it won't be as tight not that this one's like unreasonably tight but um, you do have options when you get their bezels. The bezel insert really is an elegant piece of machinery. It's a ceramic, flat, black insert. The indices are engraved and filled with paint, not luminescent, although Namoki do have luminescent options, but not with this specific graphic. It does have a luminous pip at 12 o'clock. I really like it, and it gives the build a 
feeling of elegance and class. So the crystal I've chosen for this build is a very shallow, double dome, sapphire crystal with clear AR th coating. It's Namoki's uh, NMK035 crystal. It really is thick. Um, when you see the parts review, it's a really substantial piece of glass. Great clarity. No reflections because, it, well, fewer reflections because of the AR coating. A great crystal. Then onto the chapter ring. So the chapter ring is the brushed stainless steel chapter ring with laser engraved indices. A really good piece of um, engineering. There's a location tab at 12. It doesn't fit entirely snugly, so you do need to watch your alignment on this. Better than a Seiko alignment, but you can sort of make a mess. If you're brave, you can use hypo cement on the locating tab to make sure it is stuck and not moving around. Um, I would be a little bit scared of getting strands of hypo cement all over the inside of my build. Um, but yeah, um, this is a great chapter ring if you're wanting to do a watch that's homaging something that doesn't have a chapter ring, um, like a Seamaster or a Subby. Um, you can get them with the laser engraved indices. I chose that because of the linear graphic that it's lending to this. Or you can do them without indices and you can get them in a polished finish. The dial. I chose it because it is a really good homage to the Omega Seamaster 165024. It's a matte black dial. The indices are painted with painted loom. And the graphics really do a good job of copying what you saw on those old Seamasters. The thing about this dial, though, it doesn't have patina loom. It's modern. So this looks like a fresh, newly issued homage to an Omega 165024. I really do like it. I think it does a great job and um, very utilitarian, very tool-like. It is a no-date dial. I love that. And so you can use an NH35 and have a ghost position, or you could use something like, I think it's an NH38, that is designed without a date. And then pairing perfectly with this dial are these sword hands. You could use these on a mill sub build, either of the Omega, or if you wanted to do a subby. Great hands, the minute hand reaches into the minute indices well, the hour hand just touches the hour indices, and the second hand almost touches the chapter ring. Well proportioned for this build. And our final element of the build is the crown. I really would have liked the fluted crown to match the bezel, but they didn't have them in stock, so I went with a knurled crown. And I'm happy that I did. It fits really well. I took time to get the stem to just the right length, and so the crown, it kind of unscrews with a, a good healthy pop. Um, you'll see now, um, it jumps really well when it gets to kind of the end of its thread, pops nicely, winds very well. And then because I took the time um, to get the stem the right length, it seats really well as well. So a great crown. It's got the S in it. I think all of the Moki's crowns have an S, but I stand to correction on that one. And uh, yeah, well worthwhile. So for straps, I reached out to Adrian of Bark and Jack, and we agreed that NATO would look good on this watch. So this is his tubular nylon, Deep Ocean, and uh, it just pairs so really well with this. And then the second one that we've got is his Broad Weave Storm Grey. So I really would recommend if you're looking for a good strap, reach out to Adrian, give him a shout, and he'll set you up with something good to wear your watch on. The RBC010, homage to the Omega 165024, a build that, in my opinion, has turned out really well. So, what do you think? I know, you want one, right? <laughs> there are two ways that you can do that. The most obvious way is that you can build your own homage to the 165024. Or you can build an homage to pretty much anything you want. So click on the link below, it'll take you over to nomokimods.com. Load up what you need in your cart, and on the way out, use the code WMBI10, and you'll get a 10% discount on your purchase. That's if you buy before the 10th of July, 2022. If you're watching this after 10 July, 2022, use the code WMBI5, and you'll get a 5% discount. But 
maybe you're not the building type. <laughs> maybe you've just watched this video and said, man, I'm glad Sean can do that, but that's not my cup of tea. But you're really aching for one of these watches. Well, then send me an email at watch, W-A-T-C-H-M-B-I, at gmail.com. And uh, we can get the project going. I'll be happy to build one for you. So I just want to say thank you so much um, for watching this video. I want to say thank you to Namoki for partnering with me on this. And I owe them an apology. I'm going to put a video out next week. But in part one of this video, click on the card at the top to watch part one. I review all of the parts and I give the pricing on all of the parts. The difficulty is I gave the Singapore dollar pricing and not the US dollar pricing. So um, I will be putting out a video to amend that massive mistake and I will be reviewing all of their value scores because of course it's going to push the value of their products upward. But guys, this has been a lot of fun. I really am happy that you came along for the ride and I want to say thank you for your support just one more time. Cheers.